brought on to glory and loved ones and and uh, you know I said one of the greatest one of the greatest things that we can rejoice in is when we lose a loved one that they were right with God that they were saved that amen, amen. and uh, you know I lost I, I said this uh, I lost my sister this year and it was it was a time that we had conversed over the phone did not get a chance to see each other since we were like three years old but I was able to minister to her and I was able to amen share with her the good news of Jesus Christ and you know she had a hard life she'd been in prison twice amen and and uh, she ended up uh, with her children she gave them up for adoption finally God worked it out. She got her children back. Every one of her kids are saved. Every one of them, amen, is, it knows that mama has gone on to heaven. She give her life to the Lord. She quit drinking. Come on, amen. God took that alcohol away, took drugs away, amen. And, and she, uh, she asked me one time, she said, is there any certain church I need to go to? I said, yeah, one that preaches the truth is, and it is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, amen. And a month later, uh, she called me all excited and she said, I went to church and she said, I don't know about this church, but she said, it was something happened. She said, I, I went to the altar, they laid hands on me and I came up speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so she said, I'm Pentecostal all the way through. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, but you know, we, we've seen so, so many deaths and you know, and I know Pastor Brian and, and we look at this right here and, and the families and, uh, it's, it's hard, amen, it's really hard. But we know this, God kept us alive for a reason, yes. amen? And no matter what you're going through, I've said this to my wife, I've said this to others, no matter what you're going through, understand this right here, somebody is going through a whole lot worse, amen? Yes. And so if you think you got it bad, uh, I've said this, go down to Fort Sam, go up on the burn clinic down there and see some of the soldiers, see some of them that came back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Three-fourths of their body burned, amen, and they'll never, they're never going to be able to have a normal life. But they would tell you this right here, I'm not going to give up on living, I'm not going to give up, amen. And there, uh, there's so many of them there still praising God, giving Him glory. And so tonight, looking at, amen, everybody here tonight. We can say this right here. God is taking us through some battles. He's taking us through some storms. Amen. And so in 2022, he's not going to stop being God. He's not going to stop being your protector. He's not going to stop being your provider. He's going to bring you through 2022. Amen. And if Jesus Christ carries, we're going to see 2023, 24, 25. Amen. We're going to see the year of the Lord. So we want to make sure on this right here that we stay faithful and do not let situations control your faith amen tonight as we get ready to give unto the lord this will probably well it will be the last time amen that we'll be given amen if you if it's for your taxes make sure if you're writing a check make sure and put down amen uh this month right here 12 31 amen and and make sure that uh, we get it and we'll uh, give it to you for your taxes. But more than that, I just want to, and I've said this, I want to be able to go out and send, we were faithful down to the last minute. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, the Holy One of Israel, we thank you that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you're the God of every one of us here. And you're the God of every man and woman on this planet, Lord God. And I thank you that as we begin to move forward, that, Lord God, there's some that are right here tonight. That, Lord God, this is going to be this is going to be a time of waiting. It's going to be a time that we begin to look back over 2021 and say, you know what? I, I need to make some changes. I need to get a new attitude. I need to come into the place where I'm more faithful to God. I'm committed uh, to the word. I'm committed to praise. I'm committed, Lord God, to re reach out to lost souls. I'm committed to help the hungry. I'm committed to clothe the naked. I'm committed, Lord God. God, that I'm the solution, not the problem, that Lord God, through all this right here, that my purpose, my God-given purpose, that Lord God, it shall speak out louder than the negative voices of man, that Lord God, the church, 
The church is not the building. The church is the people. And we believe that the people of God, that they're going to rise up, Lord God, and we're not going to be silenced. We don't have no volume uh, knob on us, Lord God. And, and we're tuned into the right frequency because we're walking and talking with you and we're hearing clearly. So tonight as we get ready to give, we're saying let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. We give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. 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 Let's come and give unto the Lord tonight. telling us in that God you're saying that you were around from the very beginning you was the God that created the the angels the uh, heavenly you even you were even the God that created Satan Lord I know a lot of times people forget about that they always say that the devil is powerful and mighty but you're the God that created all things and all life God and we thank you we thank you that that is a testimony of your power that's a testimony of who you are God you're not something a, a, a figment of our imagination you're not something that, that man could create a God that would judge the world for their sins God no you are the reigning ruler of this universe you are the judge you are the God that loves us. You're the God that, that delivered your people, Lord, in the form of your son. And we thank you. And we thank you for everything. We thank you for this ministry. Thank you for the faithfulness of the believers in this church, God. As we grow and mature together and, and, and conform to the image of Christ, God, may we continue to do it in love. May we continue to do it in unity, God. Moving into 2022, God, we want, we want more of you. We want more of your Christ-like characteristics, the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. We we want that to grow more within this ministry, God. We've already seen it in 2021, and in 2022, God, you're going to continue in that path. And we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We are glad to have you guys here this evening. And like I was talk talking about earlier, that the mere fact that you're here, um, don't take that too lightly. Because I used to come to church, and, and even, even when I... And, you know, in my flesh, I didn't want to come, but I came because I was drawn. I was compelled. When I came, I was like, man, this is where I need to be. This is the place where I need to be. And, and again, I always say this. Everything that happens is ordered by God. And when you start understanding that, when you start seeing the word of God and seeing the fact that when God has his hand on you, you will find yourself drawn to him. You don't even know why. You'll be like scratching your head going, why am I here? What's going on? Right? But God will draw you. Why? Because it's by his spirit that you're here. You could be someplace else. I could have been somewhere else. Amen. And so I'm saying that because I believe in divine connections. I believe that nothing that, in, like this evening, didn't happen by accident. Amen. I, I, I'm telling you, I, there was family members and loved ones that I reached out to. And, and like Bishop said, we pray for them. Um, I've been there. I've been there where I was kind of like, eh, I was a little indifferent to the things of God. Until God, until the Holy Ghost got a hold of me and was like, hey, you should grow more and more and more in Christ-like behavior. And that's why we're here tonight. Amen. Even when I was tired, like, like tonight, I'm on, I'm on call tonight uh, for work. And I've been monitoring my phone, but I said, oh, man, I hope you don't get this. And, and I was kind of worried about that. But guess what? I said, nothing's going to keep me out of the house of God. We came here. We had fellowship. We ate. We, we linked up. We're encouraging one another. And I'm telling you, we're going to usher in this year and watch as yes. God has his hand on yes. you. He, you will see him moving your life in 2022 just like he did in 2021. Do not forget and count your blessings, the small things, the big things, amen, as we move forward together, amen, and you will see that God will always show himself on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I believe as we get ready to go into a new year, and I've said this so many times, sometimes we think that, you know, we've had it so hard, we've had it so bad. But you'll never know the strength of God until you come to the end of your strength. 
You'll never know God the healer until you're so sick the doctors look at you and say there's nothing we can do. And you begin to pray and God comes through, amen. He's faithful and he says, by my son's stripes, amen, you're going to be healed. But you got to come down to that moment that no longer is it you, it's, it's all about him, amen. Tonight I want to give you some scriptures to encourage you as we're getting ready to go into 2022. I've shared this. We see a spirit of Marxism, socialism, and capitalism. We look around communism, I should say. Capitalism, amen, that is, is dwindling and we need to have it strengthened. But as we look at this right here, the voices of evil are being right now. They're being broadcast as such a volume by our news media that it is hard, amen, to get the truth. But I want to share this right here that as we begin to move forward, that which God has for us, amen, the truth that God has given unto us, we have to stand on it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The word prosper means this right here. It means to overtake you, overpower you, amen, and destroy you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be damaged. How many know that we're some damaged goods? Amen. We got some damage on us. But through all of this right here, amen, we also know that our Lord Jesus Christ has kept us from the ultimate destruction of failure. I want to take you to the book of Jeremiah, and I want you to listen to what Jeremiah the weeping prophet was saying. And he was speaking this right here, amen, as the voice of God to the children of Israel. And, and it's found in Jeremiah chapter 17. In verse, he said in verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Can I read that again? Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, or his strength, or his uh, divine direction, whose, and, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Verse 6 says, For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not, shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. He says in verse 7, but watch this, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Why? Verse 8, For he or they shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Then he said in verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can be seated. The prophet is speaking a word that is not a popular word. When you get a, a preacher that is preaching the truth, it is not a popular message. It is something that is like a thorn that begins to, anybody ever been out barefooted and stepped on these, these little uh, stickers out there? And Man, I mean, you go to hopping around and, and you got to get that little that sticker out and it hurts when, it, when you pull it out. Well, you know, sometimes what happens is the word, amen, is meant, amen, to take us off of a path we shouldn't be on. And so the prophet Jeremiah was speaking, amen, to God's people. And this is what he said. There's two types of people. Bless and curse. That's it. Amen. You're either blessed or you're cursed. Amen. And I, I, I chose this many years ago that I would rather be blessed than to be cursed. Amen. If you've been under the curse, if you've been under, amen, when you were out there and the only thing you were doing is making decisions of the flesh, out there living and gunning and going 90 miles an hour, how many know that you're always in trouble, it's always something happening, and even then you're still saying, oh God, if you'll get me out of this, I promise we won't do it again. How many ever did that? Come on. Amen. God got you out of it. What would you do? You went back and did it again. And then you find out the curse that comes with it, amen, is the curse of the flesh. That's the reason that we have many today that 
They'll, they'll tell you, I, I don't know why. It's my finances or it's my health or, you know, it's my family, my relationship with others. And, and you know, I, I just feel like that there's nothing really happening. And I ask them this question, are you cursed? Are you cursed? Well, no, I'm a Christian. Well, no, I ask you, are you cursed? Because when I ask you if you're cursed, what I'm saying is, has your flesh overcome your faith? Has what happened, amen, is you reverted back, amen, to where you're doing what you used to do, but you're hoping, amen, that you'll get what God has given out. Yes. Yes. That's, That's the reason important. that we look around today and we see that many are churchy. Yes, you know, it's not so that the world's so churchy that the church is so worldly you can't tell who's who. And this was actually said by somebody that wasn't saved. This was said by a comedian. He said, listen, I can go into churches of America today. He said, you know what? He said, I am not saved. He said, I don't go to church. I don't like church. I don't like preachers. But I can go in there and everybody, he said, they'll think I'm saved. I know how to raise my hands. I can say hallelujah. He said, but I'm cursed. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't like living under a curse. But that's the only way I can make money. That's the only way that I can have prestige. That's the only way that I can have the million dollar homes and everything else. He said, because you Christians are always broke. That's what he said. 60% of, listen to this, 60% of the church, amen, lives in poverty. Isn't that something? When we look around, we find out that over 50% of the church lives in less than the health that is outlined in God's word. Why is that? Because many times what happens is we're not willing, amen, to make the flesh submit, amen, to the Word of God. Amen. How many ever said this? I'm getting ready to go into a new year. And you know what? First thing I want to do is I want to go on a diet. And you know as soon as you leave here tonight, amen, you see the golden arches or you, amen, you, you're just going to look around, man, I'll tell you what, you know, I couldn't even make it out of the church I had to have something to eat. My body's screaming. But you find out that, listen, you have to take authority. Uh, the Word of God, I, I said this to myself, amen. You have to come to the place where you look at your body and say, you're not in charge anymore. How about your finances? Oh, finances, that's a big one right there. I'm cursed. Well, no, what happens is, first of all, we don't bless God with our money. Preacher gets up and preaches anything about tithing and offering. Uh, understand this right here. All of a sudden, you ought to see the, the taxes that come and everything else. I don't want to go to a church. All they do is preach on money. Of course, I wouldn't either. I want to go to one where they're faithful and say, you know what? I bring my tithes and offering, amen, and I'm willing to support the house of God. You know why? Because they have outreach ministry. Because they're, they're out there feeding the hungry. They're out there clothing the naked. What I can do, I can't go do all this right here, but I can help fund it. I can help be a part of that right there, amen. And when you begin to bless God's people, watch and see what happens. God has people begin to bless you. And, and you're saying, through this right here, well, you know, America... We, we, I'm sorry you can't go to work, you know, you, you haven't had the jab, you know, no jab, no job. How would it be if you looked and said, well, that's okay. God's blessed me with my finances and my 401k looks good. Guess what? I got annuities over here. I got savings bonds over here. You know, my savings account's up. I'm going to be just fine. How would you like to be like that? And your employer goes, oh, really? Yes. You know why? Because I learned how to budget. I learned how not to be under the curse of money. I understand this right here. It's one thing to work for money. It's another thing that make, you make money work for you. That's right. You're not a slave People get so mad when somebody's got money. You ever been there? Yeah. Oh, look at them. Yeah. They got money over there. You know, the millionaires living up there in them high homes and all this and everything else. We need to take some of their money. We need to give it to the poor. Well, the reason many are poor is because they don't manage what they got. So we look at this right here and say, 2023 is, uh, is coming, 2022. We're going into it, but I'm talking about 2023. Think about this. If you don't have a two to five year plan, that's a short plan, then understand this right here. You always live in less than God's best. 
It means I need two years right now just to be able to get my head above water. I need two years right now that I am going to go under a strict, amen, watch this real. I'm going on a strict budget. I'm going on a strict, amen, right now, taking my health back. Hallelujah. It means that, you know what, i got to get off the couch, and, and i got to start walking. i got to start getting out there. i got to get my immune system built up. I want to get my lungs, amen, to where they can breathe. You know why? Because the respiratory disease that is coming, amen, is one that kills ones that can't breathe. I know. And I've shared this. I said, you know, when you preach what you know, and I don't brag about this, I, it's to my shame, but for 28, 29 years, I smoked like a freight train. Get out there, I'd drill sergeant in the Army two different times, I would run troops five to seven miles. We would get out there and run, I'd take them out there on confidence course and and we would go out there, but after it was all over, I couldn't wait till I got that cigarette, man, because I was coughing so bad, but yet I had to have that cigarette. And I kept doing that until it got to the point where the doctors are saying that, you know, that small granulation on your lungs might be early signs of cancer. I must have quit a thousand times. My kids would I, would, I would get so upset and angry and actually my kids would go and get a pack of cigarettes and bring it and light it for a hold it and light it and just to calm me down. Here, go on back, do this. I said, my God. But watch this. One day, one day I said, God, I can't do it. Now, I, I'm going to tell you something. God did not hate me because I smoked. He didn't. But God hated that I was in progressive death and that I may not be able to complete my God-given purpose. Amen. And I prayed and I said, God, I can't do it. You take it. I'll give it to you. I've tried everything. That's it. Listen, the next morning, I got up and went to work, got my cigarettes, put them in my pocket. I went in and I... I was working up on post. I went and laid them down in my toolbox. Now, before this, I'd been praying for people at the altar. And they were being healed. I had laid hands upon ones that had cancer, and that cancer had completely gone. I was serving the pastor at all levels. But I had a secret sin. I didn't want anybody to know that I smoked. So I'd have to hide it. You know? <laughs> and I said, God, I can't do this. So when I went to work and I, I just laid them down, I said, no more, no more. And every, every day I would take one out and I'd hold it up and I said, you know what? This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice in it and I will be glad. You will not kill me. <laughs> I laid it back down. First thing I know, I was completely, completely different, delivered. I went cold turkey. No patches, no nothing else. Just completely got off of it. The doctor told me, and I'm sure this for a reason. The doctor told me when I had open heart surgery, he took my heart out, held it in his hand. And he said, I went over every bit of your heart. He was, a, he was a Christian doctor, and he said, the only way I know that you ever smoked is you told me. Wow. He said, I examined your lungs while we had you open and everything. And he said, I still can't believe that you ever smoked. And I told him, I gave it all to God. He said, well, he took every bit of it. He said, had you smoked one more year? He said, there's a good possibility that you wouldn't be alive today. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. And they shook me. So I said, you know, sometimes we got to get into the place that we say, wait a minute, is my health cursed? Come on. Is it? It's connected. You cannot, amen, I've said this right here, you cannot be diabetic, amen, and, and just eat tons of sugar and candy and, 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 you know, and bread and potatoes and corn and all this and raise your sugar up and then blame the devil. Oh, the devil. The devil put it in my mouth. No, he didn't. Almost started to say shut up. Amen. No. 
What you got to say is this right here. Anything in my house, amen, that is detrimental to my health and my God-given purpose, I've got to get it out. I've got to get rid of it. Well, you know, it's easy to run up to, to the altar and say, look, hey, preach, just put your hands on me. I had a guy tell me this. Just put your hands on me and, you know, just do whatever you do. He was a DJ for the radio show. I won't say which one. Very well known. And I had went to see him, and the doctor said, we don't know what's happening. They said, uh, from his feet going up, they said, he's dying. There's, we, we've never seen this. And by the time it gets to his heart, he'll be dead. They said, we're going to give him about 20 hours. Well, his wife had been coming to church, and that made him real mad. He didn't like me because his wife now wouldn't go to the bar with him. And, and you know, and uh, so when he decided he wanted to smoke a reefer, she didn't want any of it, and he got mad and everything. So... He, he told me, he said, hey, listen, honey, call that preacher. She said, what do you want me to call him? No, call him. I want him to come and, you know, just do whatever he does. I came up there. Rode my motorcycle over there and had my leathers on. I walked up in there and I said, what do you want? I said, I heard you dying. He said, well, thank you. I said, you know, if you die right now, you can go to heaven. He said, you're some kind of preacher, aren't you? I said, well, I said, you're some kind of devil, too. He looked at me and said, why are you talking to me like that? I said, because that's the, way you, that's the way you're living. I said, you're under a curse, and the curse brings death. I said, but watch this right here. If you're blessed, that brings the blessings of God's word. That brings the promises of God. And I said, if you call upon his name, thou shalt be saved. There you go. He said, well, just cut through all that and do what you do. <laughs> so I prayed over him. I prayed that God would wake him up. I prayed that he would have a taste of death. His eyes are about this big as he's looking at me. And I don't close my eyes when I'm praying. I'm looking. I said, Lord, let him have a taste of death and see what it's really like. Is, is that really what he wants? And so as I'm praying, that, and I get down to the end, I, I, I call his name and I say, hey, listen, wouldn't you like to let Jesus Christ be your friend? He said, yeah, I, I need a friend. I said, well, let's just ask the friend in your heart we did. So I left. I got a call the next day. And he's on the phone and he said, you're not going to believe this, preach. I said, what's up? He said, they're letting me out of the hospital. I'm going home. He said, all that that was happening, going from my feet to my heart, it stopped. He said, it's gone. He said, that whatever you did, and he said, I'm all right. And I said, remember this right here. I said, don't make a mockery out of God. I said, he saved your life. Him and his wife, they renewed their vows. And he turned his life around. He began to amen, understand what death really was like. He said, I don't like it. And he, him and his wife, and they moved and, and they joined another church. And uh, this was somewhere up in, uh, I think up there in the Midwest and, and everything. And they were doing really well. And then I got a call. And it was him. But he was happy. He said, I, I called you preach. I got to tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, I'm going to die. I said, well, hallelujah. I said, I die every day. Paul said, we got to die to the flesh every day. Amen. Come on. Amen. From the time the doctor slapped you, you start crying, you start dying. Yes. You're closer to death today than you were, amen, and not as close as you'll be tomorrow. And so I asked him, I said, so what is it? He told me the whole story. He said, but this time I'm ready. This time, he said, I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. His wife got on the phone and we talked for a little while. She called me a week later and said he passed. He went on to glory. And she said when he was in the hospital and the nurses came in and everything and they were all, we, you know, we're sorry that there's nothing else we can do. He said, that's all right. He said, why? Because I've seen the hand of the master. He said, in all this right here, my angel came to me and said, I have been sent to carry you into the glorious presence of God. And so it was during this time that he said, I was under a curse. 
but that I went to the blessing. And I ask each and every one of us this one question. Are we wanting to be blessed? Being blessed doesn't mean everything's going to be rosy. It doesn't mean everything's going to be, you know, it's just it's going to be just a little old trip through the park. No, it means in all this right here that when the battle comes, amen, that Jesus Christ will give us the strength to be able to overcome it. Amen. It means through this right here, I shared this and I'll, I'll, I'll tell this, amen, even for like our children. There was a young boy and he was always being bullied in school. How many know you, we see a lot of that today? It's always been. And this little, this little uh, child right here, he wasn't as big as the rest of them. He always got picked on and bullied. But he would run home after school as fast as he could. And as soon as he got home, the gate he'd open, he'd get inside and close the gate, and the bullies had to stay out. One day he was running home as hard as he could go, and they were about to catch him. All of a sudden they just stopped, and they froze. He turned around and he looked at me and he said, I thought that's what you wanted. He said, you don't want none of me. They were just like, hey, man, we don't want, any, we, we, we don't want, we don't want anything to do with you. And he's like, yeah, come on, get some of this. But when they ran away, he turned around and looked. And there was his big brother that was over six feet tall. And how many know this right here? The enemy did not, they didn't see him. They saw the one behind him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, his spirit will raise up a standard. That's the reason I've said this right here. The enemy is not going to see you. The enemy is going to see the Jesus in you. And the enemy is going to flee. The enemy has to go. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know you're there. Yeah, I didn't think you wanted any of me. It wasn't anything about you. It was the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is upon your life. That's the reason as we look at the time that we live in, we have to understand that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I want to take a moment, amen, to talk about, and I keep using this word battle. Battle. Army term. Battle. It means aggressive, aggressively assaulting the enemy, amen, with a common cause. We look at Russia. In Ukraine, we look at what China is wanting to do with Taiwan, and we look around at these other countries and how that they want to overtake and overpower these other countries. Amen. But what is stopping them? Think about it. What is stopping them? America. America, because they're saying, "Listen, we we can take Ukraine. That's no problem." But what is going to happen, amen, if America steps in and Russia now has no, they have nobody else to back them up. And America steps in and says, not on my watch. Well, you know, what about China? What about China? Taiwan? They hate freedom. Capitalism. They only, they only love communism, socialism, Marxism. They only want total control. But what happened is there's one nation that is stopping them from doing it right now, and it is the United States of America. Why is that? Because we've always said this right here. God will go before us. Amen. We've had generals, amen, General uh, Norman Schwarzkopf during Desert Storm. I served under him. He was a man that got up every morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, called all his general officers together. They had Bible study. They had prayer time. Here was a time that he prayed and said, God, he said, through this right here, he said, I do not want to lose not one soldier. Not one. The only soldiers that we lost during that time were ones that had died because of their own mistakes. One got, one got killed because they didn't have a ground guide out there. They were backing up a vehicle and ran over somebody. You see, that was, that was the only time. They said that when this happened, they found General uh, Norman Schwarzkopf down in, the, uh, down in the bomb shelter down there. He was weeping and crying for the family that was going to have to receive the body of this soldier right here. It broke his heart, and he was crying out to God, give me strength to be able to go through this. Give me the strength to be able to overcome this. He said, the enemy has no right to touch an American. Wow. He was a man not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
He said, every battle that America's fought, we've had great men and women, he said, of God that would stand up there in the high ranks. And he said, we refuse to give in. He said, to the curse of the enemy. We refused it. We look at this right here. And as we get ready to go forth, I've, I've seen today where in America today, we have generals that are standing up today. And they're taking up for CRT, critical race theory. Yeah, let's separate. Let's separate. Let's, let, let's divide. I've seen this so much. Of course, I grew up in the 60s. I grew up in the time where we saw the riots. And we saw the issue between white and black and brown. And, and we saw all of these issues and everything else. And I asked this one question. Why is it? Why is it that we have to face this? And it was because the evil heart of man that wants to take away from the blessings of God. That's right. And I've said this right here. I don't care. Amen. Listen, and I want you to hear this. I don't care the color of your skin. I want to know the content of your heart. Amen. I want to know that you are willing to rise up and stand. That you want the truth, the value. And, 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 and I've said this. We as a nation have come too far to have these evil leaders yes, want to bring us back into the time of segregation. I know. That's what they're trying Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The church has been silent. Yep. The church has not said anything. But I, I just want to say this. If you look around in America today, you're going to find out that, listen, we are just who we are. Yes. I've said this. Think about it. We have a generation today that I don't know. I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you ethnicities. Amen. Well, you know, my mom is black. My daddy's white. My uncle German and his wife was Korean. Uh, we, you know, we get into this and we go through this and everything. I said, but let me ask you this. Who are you? Who are you? And this is what they said. I am who God made me to be and God don't make junk. Amen? Hallelujah. We were in Georgia. I'll share this real quick. We were, we were babysitting a man, a little Erica. And she was adopted. And just like i have been adopted and we, uh, we were babysitting her. Her, I guess it would have been her mom's uncle was a four-star general. So Erica went everywhere with us, everywhere. And so I was, I was in line going to get my, renew my driver's license there in Georgia. And, and little Erica, amen, she was black. And here I am, you know, I, why does they come? And so... I'm up there to get my driver's license, and Erica's screaming out, Daddy, Daddy. Everybody looking around, I said, come on, baby. She ran up there, jumped up in my arms, went in there. This lady, she said, is that your wife in the car? I said, uh-huh. And this is your baby? I said, uh-huh. I said, figure that one out. My wife's like, I, I, I. <laughs> So we, we did that, we got through there. We went to, went to a restaurant to get something to eat. So we're sitting there and my wife had gone to the restroom and I'm sitting there with little Erica and we're playing, she's daddy this, daddy that, and everything, you know. And, and here's this, this woman that's sitting over here at the table and, and everything, and she just, I mean, she just giving us an eye and everything else. And, and so she finally just kept staring and I said, listen, ma'am, she by my other wife. Peggy came out and she said, what's going on out here? I said, I just told her that Erica's by my other wife. She said, shut your mouth. But we had fun. Amen. And the reason I'm sharing that is because I've said this right here. If you have a skin problem, you have a sin problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because we live in a time, I believe that right now, 
amen, that we have to rise up, come against the evil heart of man that desires, amen, right now to suppress what God has blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I want you to remember this. But I am truly, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. That is for today. I am truly full of power by the Spirit of the Lord to speak to America. Speak to America. And vocally speak out against the sin that this nation is involved in. Amen. I stand truly pro-life. I stand truly pro-marriage. I stand truly, amen, there are but two genders, and that is a girl and a boy, a man and a woman. Amen. Why? Because deception is nothing but arrows of the enemy that bring the wounded to their knees. Amen. And I've said this for you. If we can't figure this out, then we're really in trouble. Yes, sir. Little Johnny becomes little Janie. No, he's still little Johnny. Understand this right here. When you talk about, amen, gender, it is in the blood till the day that the blood is evaporated. Amen? That's right. Oh, preacher, you can't say that today. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I made a statement. Someone had already told me. They said, you know what? I think so-and-so is doing trans and all this right here. I said, bring me the DNA. Bring me a copy of the DNA, and I'll believe it. But we can't do that because the DNA would show that it's a male, but they want to be a female. I said, understand this right here. You're, you're not satisfied with what God created you to be. You're depressed. Yes, sir. Won't be long you'll be suicidal. Yes, sir. It won't be long that opioids. It won't be long that fentanyl. It won't be long that death comes in. You know why? Because you can't stand the thought of who you are until you believe that God inside of you is greater than anything that the world can convince you of. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So 2021, we look at this, it's been a year of deception, it's been a year that we've seen all this has happened, but the church of the living God has got to be full of the power by the Spirit or the Holy Spirit, amen, amen and of judgment. Amen. All this feel good. It's killing the church. I've seen preachers get up and preach, amen, that listen. They preach, you give $50, God's got $500,000 coming to you. People throwing money down, doing all this right here. And I said, listen, that's deception. That is not of God. Send me $10,000 and God will heal you of cancer. No, I'll take the $10,000 tithe on it and then I'm going to invest in it. Amen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the local church that preaches the word of God. I'm going to get hands laid upon me. Amen. Anoint me with oil. And if I have uh, committed any sins, it shall be forgiven me and I will be healed. Amen. Very good. Wow. How many need a healing? I want you to just lift your hands right now. Before this year goes out, why should you have to wait for a new year, amen, for the same God of 2021 to touch you? Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, by the stripes upon his back, the blood that was shed at Calvary. I pray right now a supernatural intervention that is going to invade right now the area, Lord God, of rebellion in the body that is bringing forth pain, that is bringing forth right now depression, that is bringing forth right now suicidal spirits, that, Lord God, I'm, I'm praying right now that they are going to be, uh, just vacuum them out. Lord God, that that pain is going to, not, not even the pain, but, Lord God, right now the situation 
that, Lord God, right now, whether it could be arthritis, whether it could be allergies, whether it could be, Lord God, diabetes, whether it could be whatever, the lungs, uh, Lord God, uh, it could have been destructive uh, way of life that was destroying the lungs, but I'm speaking right now that, Lord God, this is the air that you've given us to breathe. We want to breathe it. We want to live. We want to enjoy life. And I'm asking right now, just touch them in the name of Jesus Christ that they will be healed, Lord God, and that they will make up their mind today. I'm not going back and doing that anymore. I'm not putting that in my body anymore. I'm going to make sure right now I'm taking authority by the word of God over the situation and the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon me. Come on, somebody. The power of the Holy Spirit that is upon me is going to teach me as the word of God says the Holy Ghost will teach you amen it's going to teach you in your finance it's going to teach you in your health it's going to teach you in your marriage your children it's going to teach you in all areas of your life and that this day right here you're making up your mind I'm, I'm not going I'm not going to let up anymore I'm not letting up slowing up giving up because I am stepping up in my healing I'm stepping up in my miracle I'm stepping up in my blessing I'm not under a curse amen I am under a blessing I will be like a tree that is planted by the waters Lord God that means that I'm being fed by the Holy Spirit it means that I am producing it means in all this right here that Lord God that life is good but God is better give him glory and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. We find out that Jesus the Supreme, he is an example, amen, of how we should be. It says in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and there went out fame of him throughout all region about. What are you talking about? When you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, when you allow that voice, that inner voice, that you know is of God because it's coming against your flesh. Amen. But watch this right here. As you begin to give in, amen, to what God is telling you and resist what the enemy is trying to get you into, it says that people are going to take notice of you. The fame of Jesus went out everywhere. I've told you, there will be martyrs today that will have to stand up for the value of truth, regardless of what society says. Have you noticed this right here? All these on, on the news broadcast, we see national news. How they got up and they were badgering the church and believers and they were doing all this. But yet the men and women of God just kept on preaching, just kept on going, just kept on having church, just kept on, amen. But we see where God has turned it around, and almost everyone that came against the men and women of God, amen, God began to reveal their hidden secrets, and they've lost their jobs, they're being taken off, amen, of, of news uh, broadcasting, and we're seeing there's a, there's a great fall that's taking place in the world of evil, that Understand this right here. The evil are turning on the evil. Got to confuse them. Why? Because someone said, I refuse to give in to the flesh. I refuse to give in to the, to the way that man is. And so Jesus came out of the wilderness 40 days, being tempted of the devil 40 days, weak, but he came out. And fame went all over about this man called Jesus. The reason he did that was to show you the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when he was baptized by John, the word of God says the heavens opened, the father bragged on his son. But then the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And the Holy Spirit led him out to be tested. Amen. Oh, that devil. No. That's God. Come on, That's somebody. God. Yeah. God says, I want to show you how powerful the Holy Spirit is. I want to show you how powerful I am. I want to show you in all this right here, amen, that the enemy will try, he'll lie, but he can't get the job done. You know why? Amen. You're still in the house of God. You're still praising him. Amen. You still got your eyes on glory. In all of this right here, you're saying, come on. How 
Hallelujah. Come on, New Year. Amen. The same God that brought me through 2021. The same God that will bring me through this year coming up. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm ready for you. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet with me. You know, I, I'm excited. Uh, every uh, watch service that we have. We're always saying this right here, that we want to end the old year, amen, remembering the blood of Jesus Christ. We want to end the old year with the communion, amen, that Jesus gave his disciples. And, and I believe that as we're going to be getting ourselves ready for communion, this is saying, listen. 2021, I made it only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I only made it because he died for me. But then he arose for me. And the Bible says if the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. That means to be made alive, amen. Hallelujah, come on. We need some, amen, come on. We need some God energy. We need, amen, hallelujah. We need to be able to rise up, amen, and know that God has got everything under control. So, yes, every day. As we get ready right now, I'm going to ask you to bow your head. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But verse 28 says, but let, amen, let each one examine themselves, and so let them eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He said finally in verse 30, For this cause or for this reason many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or many have died. Father, we pray that right now that we lay down every sin, every fault, every failure. We lay down a religious attitude. We ask that right now through the blood of Jesus Christ and His broken body that as we partake of communion, that we want to do it respectively. We want to do it honestly, holy. And we believe that we are doing this memorializing right now what our Lord did for us. And we know that even before he went to the cross, before his blood was shed, he already had committed and said, this is my blood in the New Testament. So we thank you that we're going to be a part of this. And Lord God, may there be a healing spiritually, physically, emotionally, and socially, and prepare us for another year of blessings, another year that we're going to go through some battles, but yet we're going to lead many into the kingdom of heaven. And we give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. We're going to answer once you've been served, please wait until everybody has been served, and then we will partake of communion together.
if you'll hold the bread up. Breaking it between your fingers, representing the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that Isaiah prophesied by his stripes we were healed. But Jesus took those stripes and said, now you are healed. And I proclaim that right now that, Lord God, as we partake in this moment right here, celebrating every stripe, 39 stripes that was placed upon Jesus' back. That there were 39 major diseases, many of the minor diseases. But I want to say today, they're also right now today for COVID. They're right now for Delta variants. That, Lord God, we see Omicron. We see all this right here. But I'm saying that by the stripes of Jesus Christ that we are healed. And we declare that right now, as we partake of this, that, Lord God, our body lines up with the blessing of the word. Let's partake of the bread. Holding the cup up. We've sang that song so many times. There's power. Power. Wonder working power. Where? 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 In the blood. The blood of the Lamb. We thank you that, Lord God, as we hold up right now, we are signifying in this very moment that the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial Lamb, whose blood was placed upon the mercy seat, that, Lord, I thank you right now, heaven said it's enough, and that veil that separated man from the holy of holies, that, Lord God, it was written in two, and the word of God says now we can come boldly before the throne of God, hallelujah, because the blood has been shed. And we thank you that today the blood is on the doorpost of our heart. Therefore, the death angel passes over, and we give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's partake of the cup. If you want to pass the cups down to the end, they'll collect them, or you can keep them either one. It doesn't matter. Amen. Some like to keep them uh, being the last uh, communion of 2021. Right, praise God. We've got about 20 minutes, amen. So what I want to do is just to take a, a few moments. I know everybody here has got something that they're glad, amen, that is not going to follow them into a new year, amen. How many, how many got some stuff you just want to leave behind, amen? amen. Hallelujah. But we want you to be able to give a, uh, a man a short testimony on what God has done for you in 2021. That was probably the most powerful moment, amen, the most powerful moment of your life in 2021. And I'm going to get Pastor Brian, if you'll just kind of go around, amen. Uh, amen. We're just having to kind of keep it uh, to the point, yes. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Being mindful on the time. Um, as we go through, but but a quick powerful testimony. Who wants to go first? Okay, all right. With the baby, I thought you were gonna let the baby do it. <laughs> I was born. So yeah, baby being born was definitely a very powerful moment. But um, by far the most powerful moment was the moment that uh, I was in a head-on collision, oh, yes. and uh, God had His hand in my vehicle, on me, on Maddie, on my passenger. Amen. Um, and I've been saying, because I had a, a major accident in 2020, one in major, or a major one in 2021, and my, uh, my saying has been, you know, may I be without a car accident in 2022. But I tell you what, there could be so much worse that could happen, God bless you, that if, um, if I have to have another major accident in 2022, God's kept his hand on me, and I will continue Amen. to praise him. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, I tell you, that was powerful. Amen. Amen. Who's next? Yeah, we like to. <laughs> I know we get. I know y'all. I know that a lot of times we don't like speaking and stuff. But does anybody else have? Okay, we got James over here. We warming up. Some of y'all getting just getting warmed up. Hallelujah. Warm it up. <laughs> Mine is moving in with Tess and them. When I got kicked out of my house, I had nowhere else to go. So I'm glad they accepted me into the house. Amen. Amen. Powerful. That's powerful. That is so awesome. Yes. 
awesome. Anyone else? Hallelujah. All right. This is, this is the guy. Yeah, I know that um, Prince was in the accident as well this year, and I'm so grateful that, you know, it wasn't serious. And I'm also thankful for um, Hope in Our Hands Outreach. We did an amazing, amazing Amen. job. Amen. Amen. We got a lot more to go. Hallelujah. That was a great birth of that ministry. Amen. Part of anyone else? I know, the grandbaby and the son and her son. Okay, hello. Um, I think for me, my testimony of 2021 would be to come to a realization that everyone in the world needs healing. That so many people, all, every day that we come and encounter with, um, everyone has their hurt and their trauma from their past. This year for me has been about realizing that everyone needs to heal and that for everyone else of us that we always need to look and take a step back and see, look at someone else's situation from a different perspective or just life in general as healing. Um, a lot of adults have pain from our childhoods and I, I believe that that's generational curses. And um, I feel like for 2021 for me has been about realizing that I needed to heal my inner child and that not only did I need it to heal my inner child, but I wanted to help the rest of the world heal their inner child. Amen. And that's what 2021 was for me. Amen. Amen. That's it. That is real work healing anyone else. Anyone else. Thank you for that, sister. Anybody on this side? I'm coming this. <laughs> I know. We got everybody. Well, I, I'll say something. Um, <laughs> I'll say something, but um, I, I would want to. Casey? Casey? Huh? It's pretty, 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 pretty strong. Pretty strong? You get, you, yeah. Can you keep it uh, within? I talk a lot. If I can get my. I'll say something real quick. He did. There's my he spiritual did. deliverance to where I was coming to church and I would go home and I was uh, under attack by the mind, you know, the, the okay. clocks and everything. And I didn't understand the spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. I was in the playground at the time, and I was lost. But now you found. Well, during the lost and found situation, I was uh, possessed or whatever on drugs and uh, doing the wrong things. And I was I done used so much that it hurt my body. I had a stroke because uh, things going on in the body. Where if I used again, I was going to be either dead wow. or paralyzed or something bad was really fixing to happen. Yes, sir. And I was laying there in my sleep, and uh, I had the temptation of the drugs calling to me. And uh, I knew nothing about the religion or nothing at the time before I got spiritual deliverance. Yeah. Anyway, so I was wanting the drug. It was called to me the drug. And I know you don't want the drug. Get the drug. And in the back of my mind, I could hear, he is my fortress. He is my strong for him. I will trust. And I didn't know what it was at the time. I could hear it back there. Yes, sir. You know? And then, then, then I would want the drug again. And then, then the voice would say, no, he is my strong one. He is my fortress. I didn't know nothing about the Bible at the time. And then I could hear it in the back of my mind. So my mind went from uh, temptation with the drugs to what was that? Because yeah, I, I, I had to figure out what that, what that was. Amen. And I found out later it was Psalms 91. And Psalms 91 is usually used like exorcisms or, or you know, casting out, cast out demons yeah. delivered. And I got it right here. And it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my fortress. He is my refuge, and he is my yeah. fortress, my God, and him I will trust. Yeah. That was coming over my mind at the same time with the temptation of the drugs. And how we, uh, there's way more than that than my walk with Christ. Yeah, that has right. spiritually rearranged my mind and my body and who I am today. Amen. 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 I love that. Amen. 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 Bishop was talking about about deliverance. It's not an easy thing. It's something that you got to press in. Cast it out. Press it in. Cast it out. Yes, sir. That is powerful, brother. I know. He, he told me. My body healed after that. Wow. Wow. My the left side of my body was all yes, yes. I knew nothing about all that until later. Yes, sir. At the time, 
from Christ stepped in from that day forward, my healing process started. Wow. Yeah. I hope y'all heard this, heard that tonight because that means that whatever stronghold you're battling, battling with any anything, I, I, I've heard of folks saying that, like Bishop said, sometimes when, when God is finished, he's like, boom, it's over. It was in the it's, back of my yeah. mind first yes. before I found it later in the Bible. Yes, yes. I, that, is, that just put a, a smile on my face. Yeah. I, I want to um, just say something real quick. I know we have 14 minutes, so hopefully somebody else will want to say something. Just thinking back, and I, and I know these moments can be kind of awkward, um, but when you came here tonight uh, for this New Year service, amen, that some might, you might have came because somebody said, hey, let's go there, but, but I still believe that your steps are ordered by God. You may yes. stumble. God will take you stumbling into church, yes. and he goes, once I got you in church, you're going to hear something. So... The thing that I, I go through is that uh, this was the year, like Bishop said, the year where we lost, I lost my, my youngest sister. And um, very difficult, you know, prior to that, my mother and all that. I mean, so a lot of stuff, you, you, you have regrets. You think about, you know, I should, been, I should have been a little more this way, that way. But everything happens within their season. And, um, and it just reminds me that, one, each and every one of us here tonight, we could have been t checked out too. We could have been on with the Lord. Um, uh, if our relationship was strong with God or if we were saved, we, we would be in heaven. Um, but it makes me think that God has something for each and every one of you yeah. this year. And this is not by accident. Yeah. He's going to guide you if you allow him. Brother uh, Casey, you, you, you said it so eloquently about even that scripture. That, that, is, that is power. There's it's power true. in that scripture. There's even more scriptures that, that the Holy Spirit has introduced to me after my experiences from leading me and teaching me. I tell you, and I've seen, I don't know about y'all, but I've seen his growth. Yes, I can, I can testify to his growth, and, and it's, it's been steady, and, and yes, we still got a lot to be delivered from. I mean, like even within in my life and stuff, you never get to the point where you're like, well, I'm done. No, God has still got us moving, and so I just want to say that our church family has been that steady anchor, that steady rock, amen, because this is where the Holy Ghost is. This is where the Spirit of God is, and that's what you're seeing. It is the evidence, the Bible talks about that our faith is a faith of evidence it's not don't don't believe the world the world says oh you know where's your god i can't see him god has given us evidence to the contrary you see it in the lives of people that hey guess what this ain't a 12-step program this is the holy spirit this is the holy ghost this is the bible the word being made, made um, um come flesh through jesus christ and just like my dear brother like he said he didn't even know everything but that's god's providence he had his hand on him and, and he still brought him to where he needed to be so I just wanted to say I, I love my church family. Um, each and every time we grow together, I've seen myself as a as a pastor growing in the Lord um, because of the congregation, the prayers, the constant, the, the consistency, the dedication. And I would tell each and every one of you going into this year is that press for closer into God. As you see the days becoming more and more evil, now is not the time to shrink back. The challenge and the charge of, that Bishop has been preaching for years has been, it's time, you are a warrior. You're not just, I just go to church. Um, we are warriors, and in order to be a warrior, you've got to be trained. And that training is dedication, coming to the house of God. And I will say this, because Jessica would say this, when we look back on our lives, is the fact that, uh, that you got to prepare. I, I, there's no other word. The word that I would tell everybody is preparation. Preparation to come to church, shutting down your house on Saturday so that way you can make it on Sunday. I know a lot of people can't make it in like, oh, I can't, because your life is kind of out of out of whack. We used to uh, intermediately go to church. We'd come to church one Sunday, skip the next Sunday, and we were doing it. And God got a hold of us and said, y'all need to start slowing things down on Saturday. Prepare. Prepare your heart. Start playing praise and worship in your house on Sunday, Saturday, uh, not just we used to do it on Sunday only. God says, how about you do it throughout the whole week? How about you do it in your car? How about you cut out some of the secular music that you're listening to that's poisoning you? That is the deliverance that God is calling for, and we got to do that. I used to think it was an option, but the more and more you try to cling on to the world, the less and less you're going to grow um, with God. So um, God is saying this exodus that we have heard about for years and years, you got to go come out all the way. I heard it. The, one of the first messages was being delivered and, and God sending you a Moses. And I was scratching my head. I was like, well, are you saying you're our Moses? Are you saying that you're? And guess what? What you see in the, in the Old Testament has to do with the, in, in the New Testament and even in our lives because God will always send you a deliverer. If you listen, if you humble yourself, you will grow. I've seen myself. I used to have my, my worldview used to be all over the map. I used to be like abortion, I, uh, homosexual, even though, you know, I ain't down with it. But I was kind of like, well, I'm indifferent until I came a part of a Holy Ghost 
still church that said that God's word is God's word. He sets the standard. We obey the standard. Now, when you was out in the world, yes, you, you, you can disobey because you're not a part of them. But if you're in the church, the word of God is your standard. So, so when he's up there talking about the abortion and people go, oh, are you getting all political? No, no, no. He's getting all biblical. And that's what he's doing. He's basically telling you, hey, choose this day whom you will serve according to the word of God. And I'm telling you, we got a hold of that and our lives have been turned upside down. We got renewed minds, bad credit, spending our money on any and everything. When you get a renewed mind, you think differently. You don't think cardinal. You don't think worldly. And guess what? The manifestation, like Bishop said, people start going, oh, it must be great. You're successful. No, we, 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 you have not begun to see what God has in store for each and every one of us. Amen. So keep that going. We got eight minutes. Does anybody else have a testimony or something that they want to speak about what God has done? Something, um, like Bishop said, something that, uh, that was grand. Anybody? Sister Jessica. Sister Jessica. Yes. I saw I saw the hand go there. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were going. So let me go ahead. I'll go ahead and give my all right, all right, all right. You know, many times we talk about dreams and visions, and you know, I'll just share this in here real quick. I had a dream. This has been probably a couple of weeks ago, and in this dream right here, I was back in the military and I was in combat, but this time I, I was captured. And I remember as I looked at the enemy, I was asking this question. I, I said, this is going to be forever, isn't it? He said, yeah. I said, I'm never coming out of this. And he said, no. He said, we're going we're gonna to hold you forever. And so I was thinking to myself, there's just no way that I can escape this. There's going to be no way I can come out of the prison cell that they're getting ready to put me into. And in this dream right here, I could see, I could see there was a multitude of the enemy, but there was really nobody around me. I was, I was by myself. And I'm sure that many of you have had times you felt like, where's everybody at? Where's my support group? And so as I was asking this question right here, I said, well, I said, one thing about it, I'll have plenty of time to pray. I have plenty of time just to be by myself and pray, but I don't want to be a prisoner of war. And I asked the, uh, I asked the uh, captors, I said, uh, so, and I had seen a lot of this in the war, I said, so we're going to go through the torture, tear off my fingernails, I went through the whole bit. They said, yeah. I said, okay, I'm going to prepare myself for that. But in the dream, I remember, I said this right here, I said, God, if this is not your will, then I will not be a prisoner of the enemy. I will not be a prisoner held by them. And at that moment, this individual walks up to me, not, not looking like some angelic angel or anything, but this individual walks up to me and says, follow me. I said, where are we going? He said, I'm taking you out of here because you don't belong here. I'm taking you out of here and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to be released. And you know, it reminded me of Paul and Silas. As I walked by the guards, they just stood there looking. They didn't say anything, they just looked. And I went by every one of the guards, and then when I, when I got to outside of the, the, the prison camp right there, I looked around and there was nobody there. And I woke up. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say this right here. Once the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. Amen. Everything that I had been accused of, everything that had been trying to hold me a prisoner, God gave me the power to be able to walk right on past it. It had no authority over me. Amen. And I can say this right here. God was getting me ready for this coming year so that I can walk or all of us can walk free knowing this, we're not going to be prisoners of the enemy of deception. We're going to be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I, I just, I, I thought about that because in order to realize the real fear of that, you would have had to be around, amen, the situation of the POW camps that I had been around and some of the POWs from Vietnam that we had rescued and, and what they had went through was atrocious. It was beyond anything that you could imagine. And to think that you may have to go through that. 
uh, it just, I mean, you can't even begin to uh, realize the terror that it, it, it would bring to you. But when God speaks and says, this is what I'm delivering you from, then you find the joy and the amen. peace of knowing. 2000, amen, and 22 is not going to be a year for you to be a prisoner, but it'd be a year for you to be the voice of God and to walk right on past, amen. They can threaten you. They can do everything else. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we will not bend, we will not bow, and we will not burn, amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me as we get ready, amen, to usher this year out. Being glad, amen, to see it go. And, and you know, the Apostle Paul said, one thing that I do is putting those things which are behind me. He said, putting those things which are behind me, I press forward to the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Amen. So I don't want you bringing in pain of the past. I don't want you bringing in, you know, pity and all that. No, no. Leave it behind you and say, as God is my refuge, as he is my fortress, I'm moving into this year. Amen. I'm not some dead flashlight. I'm not some, amen, burned out uh, light bulb. I'm going to be a bright, shiny light of hope for the world to see. Amen. Uh, as they said, we do not take a candle and put it under a bushel, but we hold it up for the whole world to see. Amen. So I want you to turn your little light on. Amen. I always say my big light. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, cut them off. The Word of God says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and for Him. And so as we begin to, as we begin to look at this, we find out that the true light of the world is Jesus Christ. But we are, amen, we are a light of Jesus Christ, amen. John the Baptist was not that light, but he was a light. And so hold your, hold your light up tonight, amen. And representing that you are a blood-bought, blood-washed, Bible-thumping, devil-chasing, red-hot, fervent praying, child of the Most High God. You'll learn to walk on the water of time. He'll calm the winds, amen, and the seas around you. He will bring you into a higher place. As David said, he has set me in a large place. And tonight, as 2021 is now gone, I believe that 2022 is upon us. Let's give God glory. Let's give him praise. Get yourself ready. Amen. Hallelujah. We're marching forward. Come on. As, as, as Joshua and Caleb said, we are more than able to take the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless each and every one with a brand new year. And we're starting out, Lord God, that we are going to walk in faith. We're going to walk in confidence. That we will be, Lord God, the voice that you want us to be, the hands you want us to be, and the feet you want us to be. And we, Lord God, are asking for your strength. We're asking for your promises. And we're asking for your glory to fill this place. Fill America one more time. Let revival break out. Let America return to the altar of repentance and be in that one nation under God, indivisible with justice, liberty for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. Happy New Year and God bless you. Hallelujah. Do what? Oh, y'all got 30 seconds? I thought we was going by mine. Hallelujah. Uh, all right, give me a countdown. Give somebody a God bless you. Give them a hug. Amen. And get ready because God is wanting to do a new thing.